Today we are going to learn how to graph functions other than a linear function. We already learned how to graph using y equals mx plus b or finding intercepts. Now we're going to be graphing all different types of graphs. We're going to be graphing the absolute value graph, a square root graph, a quadratic function, an x squared graph, an x cu a cubic function, and a cube root. Once we memorize all these basic graphs, we're then going to start shifting our graphs up, down, left, right. We're going to stretch them. We're going to shrink them and do all different things to the graphs. So from this slide, I want you to memorize the shape that each one of these parent functions takes on. So for example, in my absolute value graph, you need to memorize that it's going to take on a V shape whenever you see something in an absolute value. Now, what I would like you to do is I'm going to go ahead and make um, function tables and put in three values. I'm going to plug in negative 1, 0, and 1. Remember, whenever you're asked to graph a function, or an equation, you can always plug in numbers for x and do a whole function table. This is how you were probably taught in Algebra 1 when you first started graphing um, equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a function table, and I'm going to set up an x column. And then in the middle here, I'm going to show what my function is. And again, remember, f of x is just a fancy way of saying y equals so I'm going to do y equals the absolute value of x. And then my third column is going to be the order pair that I'm going to graph. So I'm going to always plug in for all these parents, except for the square root. Um, I'm going to plug in negative 1, 0, and 1. So when I plug in negative 1 into the absolute value, out of that becomes positive 1. So the order pair I'm going to graph is negative 1, positive 1. Then when I plug in a 0, out comes a zero. So next order pair I'm going to graph is zero, zero. Plug in one. Absolute value of one is one. And I get one, one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph these three order pairs. And I could say that zero, zero is here. One, one is here. And then once you graph these three points, you need to memorize the shape it takes on. So when I go to connect the points, I know absolute value will always be a V shape. So when I connect them, it's a V. Now, remember in WebAssign, if they didn't have an open circle at the end of the line, just knew that, know that that meant that it kept on going. So this V shape for my absolute value graph is going to eventually get wider and wider, and it's eventually going to cover the entire X axis. So my domain here for an, this absolute value graph is going to be all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, on the other hand, as I walk up the Y axis from bottom to top, the first Y value I encounter is right here at zero. So my range is going to go from zero with a bracket, because it's a closed circle there, to infinity. Now, for the increasing, decreasing here, you can see that over here on this side of the graph, it's going down. So this would be the decreasing side. And over here, it's rising up. So that would be the increasing side. So it's going to increase from 0 to infinity, and it's going to decrease from negative infinity to 0. The constant is dNe. Then for the square root function, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my numbers. Now, remember, we do not want any imaginaries. So for my x's here, I'm only going to plug in positive values. And I'm going to actually plug in perfect square numbers that would actually give me an integer answer. So I'm going to plug in instead of negative 1, because I don't want any imaginaries, 0, 1, and 4. And again, you can choose whatever x's you want. So when I plug this in and I do the square root of it, 
and then I get my order pair. So when I plug in zero and square root it, out of that comes a zero. When I plug in a one and square root it, I get a one, so one, one. When I plug in a four and square root it, that gives me a two. So now I can graph these three order pairs, zero, zero, and I know the pink line is kind of hard to see, but it's right here at zero, zero. And then I could graph, I could say this is about one and one, and then two, three, four, and then I can say this is about four, two. Connect it, and you're gonna memorize that the square root function always takes in this like arc looking thing. Okay, we don't want any negative values there, so this is why it starts at zero. For the quadratic, this is our parabola. Okay, so when it's the x squared function, it's gonna take on a U shape or an upside down U shape. We're gonna see coming up with the shifts that when the number in front of x squared, if it's a negative x squared, that's when it's gonna be the upside down U. When I would teach this to my Algebra 1 class, I would tell them if the number in front of x squared is a positive number, it's a positive person, they're smiling. If it's a sad person and they're a negative person, it looks like it's a frown, the upside down U. Whatever tricks are gonna help you. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do my table of values here. I have x and then I'm plugging in y equals x squared get my order pairs. Oh, I didn't do increasing, decreasing constant back on that square root. Let me do that before I do this quadratic. So um, for the domain here, notice it starts at zero as I walk along the x-axis. So my domain goes from zero to infinity. My range, notice the first point as I'm walking from bottom to top, the first point I encounter is zero and it goes to infinity as well. And this one increases over the entire interval. There's no decreasing and there's no constant. So the increasing is also zero to infinity and then decreasing and constant, they're both DNE. It does not exist. Now I can do my quadratic. So again, I'm gonna plug in values. I'm gonna go back now and use my negative one, zero, and one. And again, you can use whatever you want, but if you use these same three numbers for your parents, once you plot those three numbers, then we're gonna apply the shift to those three order pairs. So X, I'm gonna plug in negative one, zero, and one. Negative one squared is positive one. So negative one, positive one. When I plug in zero and square it, I get zero, so zero, zero. When I plug in one and square it, I get one, and it's one, one. So now I'm gonna, I can graph these three order pairs, and again, notice they're the same coordinates I got for the absolute value. What's different here is you have to memorize that the absolute value is a V shape, but for the quadratic, you're gonna add a curve to it, and it's a U shape. So I'm gonna plug the same three order pairs, the zero, the negative one, positive one, the positive one, positive one. So again, when you connect it, it's forming a U, not a V. And again, the domain here of this is always gonna be all real numbers because again, that U shape can get wider and wider and it'll eventually cover the entire X axis. The range, on the other hand, we're gonna go from bottom to top. So the first point we're gonna encounter on this graph is gonna be at zero, and it's going to infinity. Now this one actually has an increase in and a decrease. So over here, this is the decreasing side, and this is the increasing side. Where it hits that vertex is where it changes direction. So for the increasing side, it increases from zero to infinity, and the decrease is from negative infinity to zero. Constant does not exist. Then I'm gonna do the x cubed graph, or the cubic function, and again, I'm gonna do my little table of values here. So x, y equals x to the third, and again, get your order pair. And again, I'm gonna plug in the same three x's, 
So negative one to the third gives me negative one. Zero to the third gives me zero. And one to the third gives me one. So now I'm gonna plot these. Now again, you're gonna memorize the shape that it takes on. The um, X cubed graph or the cubic graph, it's got a wiggle to it. So what we need to do here is plot these three points. So zero, zero, negative one, pos uh, negative one, negative one, and then positive one, positive one. So again, I don't wanna just draw a diagonal line through here, it wiggles. So it comes up here and then it goes something like that. So that is the cubic function. This one is going to be increasing through the whole thing. So it's increasing here. It looks like it dips down, but it just continues increasing through the whole thing. So again, domain and range for both of these are all real numbers. So domain, negative infinity to positive infinity, range is the same, and it's also increasing over the entire interval. So decreasing and constant are both DNE. For the cube root function, it's sort of like we're gonna take this graph and sort of flip it and rotate it a little bit, or yeah, something like that. We'll flip it and rotate it. So here, again, let's do our table of values still. So x, y equals the cube root of x, and then x, y. So negative one, zero, and one. And the cube root of negative one equals negative one. So negative one, negative one. Cube root of zero is zero. Cube root of one is one. So one, one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the graph. And again, you've gotta memorize the shape it takes on. So again, I'm gonna plug it in. So here, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one. Notice it's the same points as the, the cubic function, but this time when you connect them, it's going this way. The wiggle is going this way. It's sort of rotated and tilted down. And again, domain for this is gonna be all real numbers. So is the range, and again, it's, can, it's increasing over the entire interval. So all real numbers, all real numbers, and it increases over the entire graph. These two, again, are DNE. To memorize the shapes of these parent functions. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you equations and I'm going to apply shifts to them. We're gonna be shifting these parents up, down, left, right. We're also going to stretch and shrink them. Shift to them are transformations. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be applying shifts to the graphs. We're gonna be shifting them vertically, up and down, horizontally, left and right, and then stretch and shrink, and we'll also be reflecting them. Now, when we apply these shifts, it's not gonna be as accurate as if we were to do a function table and get a bunch of order pairs and plot them. Okay, so it's gonna be, you know, maybe a little bit off because we're only gonna be doing our three main points here. So let's go ahead and see what the vertical shifts are. Now, again, these are all the different types of parent functions we talked about the absolute value, the quadratic, the square root, and the cube root. Um, it's got those four main things. Um, you also have the cubic um, function. There's more to it, but again, these are your basic ones. So whenever there is a number being added to the function, no parentheses or anything, not under the square root, that'll tell you how many units to move your graph up. If it's a number that's being subtracted, that'll be how many times we move the graph down. So let's try some examples. So for example, if I give you f of x 
is equal to x squared plus four. This plus four tells me how many units to shift to my graph, and the plus four means I'm gonna move it four up. If I had f of x is equal to x cubed minus two, this minus two here tells me that I'm gonna be moving my graph two down. So whatever number is being added or subtracted to an absolute value, to a square root, to a cube, to a uh, square, um, that'll tell you how many times to move it up if it's added or if it's subtracted, it's moving it down. So let's try two examples here with shifts up and down. Pretty good? It has x squared plus 2. So again, we're going to graph the parent first. So our parent is going to be the f of x equals x squared graph. And you're going to memorize the points. And if you forget, quickly plug them in. So again, you can do the x squared. So you would plug in negative 1, you get positive 1. 0, you get 0. 1, you get 1. Turn these into the four order pairs. So we're going to graph, you're going to always graph your parent first. So I'm going to graph the parent here. It's quadratic. You need to memorize that it takes on a U shape. Now what we're going to do is look at the shift. They're telling me to take these three points and I'm going to move all three of them up two units. So I'm going to take the negative one, positive one, and I'm going to go up two. So my new point is going to be right there. Then I'm going to take the zero, zero, move it up two. Then I'm going to take the one, one, and I'm going to move it up two. And now I'll connect my new points, and this is my shifted graph. I'm still using the same parent, and I'm going to shift all three points down two units. So again, let me put my parent here in red again. Zero, zero. Negative one, positive one. One, one. Here's my parent. And now I'm going to graph the shift. Minus two means shift two down. It's a vertical shift. So from zero, I go down to negative two. Over here, the negative one, positive one, go down two, and it's now at negative one, negative one, and then here at one, negative one. Connect your points. Again, it needs to take on the U shape, and there's your shifted graph. So all of the blue are the shifts. Now we're gonna do a horizontal shift. So this is gonna be left and right. Always, you could always do a table of values, but again, we need to be able to do this rapidly. So this is why it's easier to memorize the parent and then just apply the shifts. Um, they are gonna get more complicated where you're not gonna to want to do a function table. Let's try the horizontal shifts. Now, this is horizontal means we're moving it left and right. Now, the numbers this time are going to be in a grouping symbol. They're either going to be a number that's added or subtracted within absolute value, within a parentheses, like a binomial squared, or uh, maybe a binomial that's cubed, or it'll be a number underneath a radical. So it's going to be in some type of grouping symbol. Now, this is where it gets tricky because you may think adding a number would move it to the right, but it's backwards of what you think. So when you add a number, we're moving it to the left, backwards of what you would think when it's inside the grouping symbol. Over here, when we subtract a number, we're going to be shifting our graph to the right. So for example, what we already saw, when there's no parentheses, this is up to. But when I add it into a grouping symbol, then this 
plus two that's in the parentheses is now backwards of what you think, two left. And then if it were minus a number, then this would be three to the right. So again, it's backwards of what you would think. Pretty good there. Let's try some applications. So again, these are all, the first two are in grouping symbols. However, number five is not. So this is in a grouping um, symbol. They're in parentheses. So this is backwards of what I think. So this is gonna be shifting it horizontally two units to the left. I'm gonna graph my parent. My parent is the x squared graph. So if you remember the order pairs, it's negative one, positive one, zero, zero, one, one. I'm gonna graph these first. I think I was doing the originals in red. So let me go ahead and stay consistent here. So this is my original parent. And now I'm gonna take those three points that I just wrote over here in blue, I'm now going to shift them two units to the left. So I'll move that one here, here, and then this one overlaps. So then now the blue one is now my shifted graph, two units to the left. For number four, I'm gonna shift it two units to the right. This is a horizontal shift. Again, you're gonna graph the parent. So zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. That's the parent. And now I shift everything two units to the right. And then connect your points. Now, number five, notice no grouping symbols here. So this minus one tells me that I'm gonna be shifting it down one, no parentheses here. I'm gonna again graph the parent. So remember, it's got a wiggle to it. So if I quick do this, if you forget, it's fast enough to just quickly figure out the order pairs. And again, these become the order pairs you graph. And remember, it's got a wiggle, not a diagonal line. So I'm gonna graph negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one. And again, it's got a wiggle. And now I'm gonna take every one of these three points and I'm shifting all of them one unit down. So put a new point here, here, and here. And again, still add the wiggle. Number six, I got two transformations to do. So the plus one tells me I'm going up one because it's not in the grouping symbol. The plus two tells me backwards of what I think, two left. Again, it's to the third power. So again, I'm still doing this same parent that I just wrote over here. So I'm gonna graph those three originals. I'm going to do the shifts. I'm going to do three different graphs here. I'm, if you want to do it from the parent to the final, you can, but I'm going to do it step by step here. So I'm going to graph my um, parent here first in red. And I think I did it backwards over there, but the parent here is red. And again, it's the X cubed graph, so it's got the wiggle. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shift it, the one unit up first. So let me do, I'll do purple. So I'm gonna go up one first in purple. So move all the points up one. Add the wiggle. And if you don't wanna add the line in there until the final, you can, and just keep adding the numbers or adding the points. And now I'm gonna take the purple graph 
And now I'm gonna shift them all two units to the left. So then I'll put a point here, one, two, and then move this one, one, two. And again, it's gotta have a wiggle to it. And the final graph with both shifts is in blue. So for this one, it's gonna be the same idea. This will be up two. And then this one is gonna be three right. Backwards of what you think. It's the X cubed graph still. So again, I need to put in those same order pairs. So I'm gonna be doing zero, zero, one, one, and negative one, negative one. And again, it's X cube, I need that wiggle. And now I'll do it in two steps. So I can go ahead and move them all up to, again, the order you do the shifts doesn't matter. So I'll do up two in blue. So take one, two, take each one, move it up two. And if you don't want to connect it, you don't have to. Um, but again, I'll take on my wiggle shape. And now I'm going to take those blue ones now, and I'm going to go three right. And the purple will be final. So three to the right. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And again, add in that little wiggle. And there would be the graph, the X cubed graph shifted two units up and three units to the right. I'm actually gonna do exactly the same thing on the next one. However, it's a square root graph. So again, this is still up to And then this one is still three to the right, backwards of what you think. But again, let's get in our parent. So remember for the square root function, I use, we didn't want negatives. So what I did here is square root of zero is zero, square root of one is one, square root of four was two. So these are my three points I'm gonna graph, and then I'm gonna shift them up two and three to the right. So zero, zero, one, one, and four, two. So this is the parent. This is the square root function, square root of x. First, I'll go ahead and do in blue. I'm gonna do up two. So take each one, move them up two. So that would be up, and then now three right, so take all of those blue points and move them three to the right. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right on the edge. And then now make your graph. Now we're gonna talk about reflections. So the next slide is talking about reflections across the X and the Y axis. So whenever there is a negative sign in front of either the absolute value of the X squared, X cubed, square root, these are all reflections or flips across the X axis. When the negative sign is under the radical or if it's in a parentheses, this will then be a flip across the y-axis. So it's when it's in it, in the grouping symbol, then it's a reflection across y. So let's go ahead and try some examples of reflections. So notice on the first one, this is outside of a grouping symbol. So this negative sign here is going to indicate that this is a reflection 
across the x-axis. The plus two tells me it's going up to because it's not in any grouping symbols. Again, I, my parent function is the x squared graph. So remember the order pairs here, negative one, positive one, zero, zero, one, one. So I'm gonna graph those parent and then I'm gonna shift it two times. I'll first do the reflection in red and then I'll move them up to. Or you can do vice versa. It doesn't matter the order that you do um, the steps. So let me graph the parent. Let's see, I was doing, I'll do the parent in black, I guess. And then I'm gonna do the reflection in red. So here's the parent. I'm gonna reflect it first. So I'm flipping my U shape and now he's sad. And now I'm gonna shift all those points two units up. And then there's my graph. So the blue is the final. The next one, because the negative is inside here, this is gonna be a reflection across the y-axis. So let me go ahead and graph my parent. So my parent is the square root function. Remember, I only plugged in zero, one, and four. Zero, one, two. Let me graph those order pairs. So here's the parent, and now I can reflect. So notice the one, one, I'm gonna make it the same number of spaces away from the y-axis, and then same thing here. I'm gonna graph the four and the two, and this would be the reflection. Transformation. So the last transformation is when we have a number in front of our parent. So when the number in front of our function is greater than one, we're gonna call it a vertical stretch. When the number is less than one, we're gonna say it's a vertical shrink. So what's gonna happen is, like for example in our quadratic, when it's a vertical stretch, we're taking those arrows or the end of it and we're stretching it up. So it's really gonna look like our graph is getting skinnier. But when it's a vertical shrink, it's like we're pushing it down and it's gonna look like it's gonna get wider. So let's go ahead and see what's happening here. So in the homework tonight, they're gonna give you an equation and they're gonna ask you to identify all the transformations that are happening to it. And then they're gonna pick the graph from a multiple choice. So for this one, we've got a two in front here. Two is greater than one. So this tells me it's gonna be a vertical stretch. My parent function here is the x squared. Now, whenever I see this, it's easier for me, it's gonna be going up twice as fast, but on something like this, it would probably be easier just to plug those three order pairs, negative one, zero, and one into this. So you'll do two times negative one squared, which is two, two times zero squared, zero, two times one squared, and it's two. So I'm gonna graph the parent, which is the x squared graph. And just to show you how it's going up faster and it's getting skinnier. So the stretch, still zero, zero, but here it's gonna go at two. And you see how they're stretching the ends of the arrows and it's actually getting skinnier. So it goes up twice as fast and it looks like it's getting skinnier. 
or thinner, however you want to think of it. But that's the vertical stretch. Next one, we're going to do a reflection. This time for the square root, it's going to be a reflection across X. So when it is outside of the radical, this is a reflection across the X axis. Remember when it was inside, it was Y. So again, the square root function, remember, was we plugged in one, one, we plugged in zero, and we plugged in four. So let me graph these, and then I'm gonna reflect it. So zero, zero, one, one, four, two, this is the parent. And then when I reflect it across X, I'll put my point down here and here, and that's the reflection. And then we'll do a vertical shrink and we're done. So the last one, when the number here in front of your function is a fraction or less than one, so because this number is less than one, this is gonna be a vertical shrink. And again, I'm just gonna quick do a table of values. So if I just plug it in, negative one, zero, and one, one half times negative one squared gives me one half, one half times zero squared is zero, and one half times one squared is one half. So again, I can graph my parent to show you how it's gonna get wider. So if I graph the original, here's my original quadratic. And now for my vertical shrink, I'm graphing the ordered pair negative one and then a half, positive one and a half. And you see how it's getting fatter or wider. So when the number in front of the function is less than one, it's gonna look like the graph is getting wider. Because what they've done is they're taking the, the black arrows and they're mushing it down. So they're shrinking it. And then it's like flattening it and making it look wider. So these are all your transformations. Horizontal, vertical, reflection, and then the vertical shrink and the vertical stretch. So you have some homework questions. If you find you need more practice identifying these shifts, I added an extra one with six more problems. And again, that assignment is totally optional.